All right, so in this video, I want to address something that people have talked about for a very long time in Bitcoin when it comes to the tokenization of assets and the exchange of tokenized assets on the blockchain. And this is the back to Genesis problem. So when someone creates a token, they have an issuance transaction. This is to say they have a transaction that originally issued that token, and then they have subsequent transactions where maybe they spent it, they gave it to someone else, and it got passed around for a little while. So the question that someone might have, suppose this person makes a transaction and sends the token to this person. And so the second person, let's call him Bob, receives a token from the first person, let's call her Alice. And in order for Bob to know that this token is valid, Bob needs to know two things. Bob needs to know when was this token created all the way back here. And then Bob needs to know, well, when Alice sent Bob this token, which, which uh, is represented by, say, this transaction here, that transfer from, from Alice to Bob, um, how can Bob know that the token he is receiving from Alice actually came from this Genesis all the way back here? That's why it's called the back to Genesis problem. And I put problem kind of in a little bit of air quotes, I guess, because, well, um, I don't know if it's a problem. I don't, I don't think it is uh, in all cases. I think that sometimes you have to think of it like a problem, but other times uh, we can start to think more nuanced and critically about what this actually means. In effect, for Bob to know that Alice sent him a valid token, he has to check this transaction, and all the way back to when the token was created. Now, if someone hands me title to a car, I'm going to want to know that every person who signed it, kind of they, they, they legitimately transferred ownership, right? No one kind of stole it and then forged a bunch of signatures and then gave me that title. Then I wouldn't have good title, right? And so it's for reasons like that that we have things like title insurance, where you kind of hedge against the possibility that maybe someone 40, 50 years ago has a claim to the title to the land that you live on, and suddenly it's not yours anymore, right? You insure against that so that you could be made whole in case something like that happens. But in this case, right, we need to verify the, tr the transfers of ownership that have governed this token ever since its inception, and that's what the back to Genesis problem is. We can do this ourselves, or we can have people in charge of registering legitimate transfers of ownership and tracking that on the blockchain. So there's a couple of different approaches, and different people are going to do it different ways depending on what's being transferred. If we're talking about a house, maybe a house only gets transferred, say, uh, I don't know, uh, 20, 30 times in the entire lifetime of the house. So, you know, uh, when someone creates it, uh, maybe that land was, you know, originally created, maybe it's a mobile home, we could say, and, and it was, the title was, was created at the time the mobile home was, was manufactured. And then it got transferred maybe, uh, maybe even, you know, 15, 20 times in its entire uh, history. So any person receiving title to this, this vehicle, in this case, this mobile home, uh, would would not have a problem verifying 15 or 20 transactions in order to make sure that their ownership stems from the legitimate uh, issuance of that all the way back in the day. Um, this is different when we're talking about, say, uh, tradable, uh, collectible uh, cards on the internet, so like a, a, a Pokemon card or something like that, a baseball card, we could say. If I trade this, uh, you know, um, uh, 400,000 times in its, in its life, then, you know, maybe every person who is receiving a copy of the newest rendition of this, of this token doesn't want to verify everything all the way back. And so how do you go about solving this, right? People try to solve this using the script that governs the transfer, and I think that is actually a mistake. So there's a script that transfers ownership, and we could say it's like this part here, right? It's, it's, it's the thing that conveys the ownership transfer. And 
they try to put rules in here that make it so that it could only be valid if you know it, it eventually leads all the way back to the beginning but that's not always possible to uh, to do properly because somebody could simply copy and paste this whole entire thing and make a new script right and it's kind of like a ghost of the original one and um, you know they have a new they've just kind of copied and pasted this into this new idea and so if all say you know we were talking about uh, Bob and Alice earlier right Bob receives something from Alice if all Bob has is this new script down here then he cannot know that it wasn't you know copied and pasted from from what was previously there and so I, I don't really think that uh, people's solutions based on a script are going to um, are going to solve this. There are fundamentally two classes of viable solutions that I think are going to emerge for uh, solving the back to Genesis uh, problem. Class number one is to simply not solve the problem. This is to say uh, we don't think it's a problem to begin with. And that is essentially where Bob just goes and does the work, right? If I've only got 40 or 50 transfers of something, or maybe even a couple hundred transfers of something, I'm probably just gonna wanna verify them all, and it's not gonna be very expensive for me to do that. Even if something has, say, a one or two megabyte image file attached to each of the tokens, maybe a signature on a document that was scanned into a computer, that effectuates that transfer. Um, even in systems like that, you know, each of these transfers is, is one or two megabytes and I've got, you know, maybe a hundred of them to get through. Well, you know, maybe my internet's not the best, but um, hundred megabytes, 200 megabytes to just download and crunch through all of this stuff. And if I'm receiving title to say a house or something, I don't think that's gonna be too big of a problem. But, uh, the other class of solution is to recognize that maybe the participants in the network are not going to solve this problem, or they're not going to crunch through all of that data themselves. And in order to solve the problem in that case, then we can introduce the concept of an overlay network. How this works is that you have uh, an overlay node which essentially registers all transactions that are associated with a particular asset. So the overlay node knows about the genesis when it originally happens, and then every subsequent transaction is registered with that overlay node so that at each point, the overlay knows where the current valid token is. And so this allows for each of the parties to check with the overlay node about the validity of particular tokens and when these transfers happen, they can also be propagated to other overlay nodes so that there's not just one single registry operator who is in charge of this and who could potentially be nefarious. We can propagate these transactions, these conveyances of value to multiple parties for distributed validation. So in this model, the parties simply check with the network of witnesses, which perform a similar role to miners on the base layer network in that they witness the sequence of transactions and they know what the current state of particular tokens are. And uh, we can check with those people in order to, uh, in order to uh, learn about the current state of the, the tokens. And we can then use that to obtain uh, certainty about whether they would be accepted. So if Alice sends a token to Bob, as we've said here, then uh, what, what happens is uh, now Bob can check the incoming transaction and see whether it is a valid entry in that overlay network uh, run by those people. And he can then use that information to know whether uh, his, his ownership is recognized by that network as legitimate. And if it's that same network that he and his counterparties would in the future use to convey a transfer of ownership of that asset, then uh, his counterparties should also be confident when he transacts with them. What Bob wants fundamentally is to make sure that when he later chooses to use or dispose of this asset, that 
the people he is interacting with would be willing to accept his transactions as legitimate. So, for example, in this malicious case over here, uh, because this previous transaction was really just a ghost of what was there before that no one's going to verify, uh, Bob could check to see whether it's on the overlay. And because it's not, uh, he wouldn't be willing to accept it from Alice because if he were to try to use this and send it to a third party, that third party would reject his ownership as illegitimate and thereby the ownership uh, would not be registered. So by registering ownership of assets on a state tracking network, like an overlay network that knows about transactions as they started from the genesis and then as they proceeded through the life cycle of an asset to its current state, uh, we can solve the back to genesis problem by enabling the people who are transacting to uh, know that their assets are recognized as legitimate and that uh, when they were to transact with them in the future, uh, future uh, counterparties would also recognize uh, those same assets as uh, legitimate. So in summary, the back to Genesis problem is a problem where as the history of an asset gets longer and longer, the recipient needs to verify the entire chain of spends. In one use case, we really don't care because the chain of spends is pretty short, and so we can decide that for particular types of assets like real estate or vehicles that don't move very often, we could simply ask the participants to verify the entire chain themselves, which they'd likely want to do for due diligence reasons. And in the second example, we can register the chain of spends on an overlay network so that the people who need to know about it can obtain certainty that their ownership will be recognized as legitimate by people who have already validated that chain of spends once and they validated it as it happened. So I hope this has been a useful uh, overview of kind of the back to Genesis problem, the various different ways that people could go about solving it. I don't believe, like I said, that script-based solutions are going to provide the ultimate solution. Uh, maybe there are some uh, that, that are more promising than others for very particular and specialized use cases, but for general tokenization of assets on the BSV blockchain, I don't believe that that's going to work very well. And so we're left with relying on the parties to actually do their due diligence when it comes to the assets they're engaging with, or uh, making use of the distributed overlay architecture to witness those transactions and obtain certainty from the registry from the registries of ownership about um, how those assets are are transferred and uh, who currently owns them. So um, thank you very much for taking the time to uh, listen to this. Um, make sure to. Uh, subscribe and follow us on all the socials if you'd uh, if you'd like to see more content like this and uh, that's about it